What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Vegas 87. We got Shamil Gazeev going against Jarzino Rosenstruck, and we are back in the apex. We have an 11 fight card, 11 fights to talk about. Very juiced card. Lots of massive favorites. We have minus 1,000 favorites, minus 900 favorites, minus 800 favorites. Eric Anders is a minus 500 favorite. It's a tough card. I know people are going to say, oh, this card's so easy. Yeah, I mean, all the favorites are, are probably going to win. It's just, you know, I put an eight fighter parlay together and it came out to plus 250. Eight fighters plus 250. So, I mean, if you do like chalk, if you do like, you know, three, four leg parlays that aren't even plus money, then yeah, this is your card. But this is a card that I'm actually surprised how much action I have on it. Um, there are some spots that do stick out. I do have eight bets. 6.5 units on the line so I did find some spots trying to find some value on a card where we just have massive massive favorites I think a lot of these favorites do win I think there's a live dog or two um, so yeah we'll definitely talk about it before we get into if you guys can please do me a favor leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have not already I'll also be on the lookout for best bet tomorrow morning I think the card starts at 1 30 eastern time in the afternoon so we'll be kicking it off around 11 30 eastern time tomorrow morning there all right I say we get into it. As always, we're going to talk through these fights from a betting perspective. We got Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi going against Loik Rajivov. And I don't think there's a ton of live dogs on this car, but I, I guess Rajivov would be one of them. I'm not on him personally, but he seems to be probably one of the most popular underdogs of the week. I think it's between him and now uh, Bernardo Sapai. Uh, but yeah, you know, Rajivov is a guy that. He does have some paths here. You know, the, the durability of Al Sawadi is a little bit concerning, but I kind of like Al Sawadi here. Um, I liked what he s showed in the Contender Series. I like the striking that he showed because up until then, you know, he did a lot of wrestling outside the of that Contender Series fight. I think it could be somewhat competitive, but, you know, give me Al Sawadi to probably win a decision here, just doing the better work on the feet, stuffing the takedowns, and I think on the feet it's not really close, but I uh, don't really trust him at minus 180. I don't trust the durability, and this is going to be his debut for what it's worth. So give me Al Sawadi, but not betting it at minus 180. Moving on, we got Ludovic Klein going against AJ Cunningham. Uh, we have Ludovic Klein minus 900, AJ Cunningham plus 600. Yeah, nothing sticking out here. I mean, to my surprise, Ludovic Klein inside the distance is minus 325. And this is a guy in Ludovic who hasn't really shown great finishing ability at all in the UFC. I think he has one finish. It was in his debut against Shane Young. But other than that, this guy's been kind of a decisionator uh, win and loss. So, yeah, um, I don't like the minus 325 inside the distance. I don't like the KO minus 125. I know that's a popular play, but uh, you take a look at Ludovic Klein and how does he win fights? 40% knockout rate, 40% submission rate. He has eight knockouts, eight submissions. I do lean probably, he probably knocks out Cunningham. I mean, Cunningham's a super tough guy, but just super hittable, but there's no value there on the Klein knockout. So, it's a fight that I'm content on passing. I think Klein wins, but you know, my laying juice on a knockout prop. I'm not sure I want to do that. Next, we got Christian Leroy Duncan going against Claudio Hibero. I like Duncan here. I like the Duncan late props. I'm on uh, Duncan round two, half a unit, plus 470. Duncan round three, half a unit, plus 850. I think he's a guy that always really takes his time. Um, he's not like a murderous one-punch power guy. Uh, he's a smart fighter as well, and I think the smart game plan would be to kind of you know, take things easy, um, a little bit of a feeling out process, maybe push Hibero against the cage, get him tired, get this fight extended, because he's not going to want to go in there against Hibero and stand and bang with this guy in those first five minutes. That's giving Hibero his one path, which I do think is an early knockout. But yeah, I think he kind of wears on Hibero a little bit, you know, gets him tired, uh, pushes the pace the second, third round, and eventually finishes him later in the fight. So I'm on the Christian Leroy Duncan uh, late props here, another really big favorite here in Duncan. Minus 305. And yeah, I like him to win, and I like those late props. Next, we got Javid Basharat going against Ayman Zahabi. We got Basharat anywhere from minus 800 to, I think I saw minus 1,000 even for Basharat now. Zahabi plus 550. Yeah, this is a total pass for me. I think Basharat wins this fight, but you know, adding a minus 1,000 to your parlay does nothing. Basharat by decisions to play. Uh, I think Basharat, if, you, if you're forced to bet this fight, probably Basharat decision minus 160, but laying minus 160 on a decision prop is totally disgusting. 
Moving on, we got Venetia's Oliveira going against Bernardo Sopai. Um, yeah, I took the dog shot here on Sopai. One unit plus 123. I think it's a close fight. I think the fight can go either way. I think it should be probably lined close, uh, closer to a pick em here. Um, the reason being is these guys are going to do stand and bang until one man falls. And on the Venetia's Oliveira side, this guy's fell three times. He's been knocked out three times. Two of them were knockouts. One was a cut stoppage, doctor stoppage. Um, so yeah, you know, Oliveira, I worry about the durability. This is a guy that leaves a ton of openings. This is a guy that is not defensively sound at all. He'll, he'll take a ton of risks. And both these guys have, honestly, elite power. Both these guys hit very, very hard. It's just, so Pai, he's never been knocked out. Um, I've never even seen him hurt either. Whereas Oliveira, um, he is there to be hit. He is there to be countered, and he has been knocked out three times. So give me who seems to be the more durable guy, but yeah, I think somebody's getting served here. I think the fight doesn't go even at minus 250. is not the, the worst parlay piece in the world there. But yeah, give me, um, I'm on the supply side for a unit. I also don't mind the, the knockout prop, but to be honest, it's not great. I mean, it's only plus 200. You might as well take the money line. Maybe he does win a decision. Maybe he does get a sub. He has a couple subs on his record, but I think it's a knockout for so pie. So I'm taking the money line in a fight where I think could really go either way. Give me the plus money. Next, we got Eric Anders going against Jamie Pickett. Um, Eric Anders minus 500 is something else, but I mean, I, I struggled to pick Jamie Pickett in, in this fight and in really any fight for that matter. So yeah, Eric Anders should win. It's just, you know, laying minus 500 on Eric Anders. What possibly could go wrong? A lot of things, but it's just hard to make a case for Jamie Pickett. I mean, if Jamie Pickett wins this fight, Eric Anders is really going to have to F up. So, uh, should be Eric Anders. I know the inside the distance is popular, and I get it, but this is one of those bets where if you do bet Eric Anders inside the distance, you'll be smashing your TV, throwing your TV um, into a, a large body of water by the end of the night, because this guy is just doesn't push the pace. He has three finishes, and he's been fighting in the UFC for a while. I think he has six, 16 UFC fights, only three finishes to show for it. But yeah, he probably should finish Jamie Pickett, but I'm not counting on it. And on top of that, the inside of the distance for Anders is horrible as well. Uh, moving on. We got Steve Ursig going against Match Now. Yeah, I like Ursig here. Obviously, another big favorite, um, but I like Ursig inside the distance. I have 1.25 units on it at minus 125. I think this might be one of the last times we get to fade the durability of Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell has been finished in six of his seven losses, four by knockout, two by sub. And although Ursig has been to decision in both his UFC fights, I think this is where his uh, first UFC finish does come here. Ursig's not some murderous power puncher, but I don't think he really needs to be. I don't think anybody really needs to be against Matt Schnell at this point point. Uh, but yeah, Ursig has a really good grappling game as well. We've seen Schnell tapped out twice. I can see a club and sub here. I can see even Ursig knocking out Matt Schnell. But yeah, I do like that inside the distance, minus 125 for 1.25 units. Next, we got Umar Nurmagomedov going against uh, Bogzat Amakan. We got Nurmagomedov minus 1,000, Amakan a plus 700. Going right back at it here with another inside the distance prop for Umar, minus 125 for 1.25 units. Um, yeah, I just think, you know, Bogzat, he's a good fighter. It's just I think Umar is going to be better in every single aspect of MMA. I think Umar's even the better striker. I think Umar's the better wrestler, the better grappler, more dangerous, fought the better competition. Boxot's not terrible, but he has been finished in his only loss. I've seen him hurt. I've seen him dropped, and I've seen him submitted as well. So, you know, Umar should be able to win this fight. Should win inside the distance. I mean, this guy's anywhere from minus 1,000 to minus 1,600. If Umar Nurmagomedov is the guy that he says he is, the guy that everybody says he is, you know, future uh future champion right like he should go out there and, and finish this guy and I think he does whether it's knockout sub I lean the sub but give me the inside the distance 1.25 units minus 125 next we got Muhammad Makayev going against Alex Perez um I like Makayev here quite a bit minus 350 he is now and yeah I like the inside of the distance as well um you know I think Perez is a guy that's been finished in six of his seven losses he's been very inactive I'm actually shocked that he made it to the scales and he, he made weight which was great to see but I'm kind of concerned about Alex Perez where's this guy's head at you know he's focusing on things outside the cage he's running his own business now um he has like multiple multiple canceled fights the last several years he has like two fights the last four years those two fights lasted a total of like two minutes so yeah I think uh if Alex Perez is not 100% bought in and I have a feeling he's not. You know, Makai is probably going to run right through him. You know, Makai inside the distance, uh, plus 120. I have 1.5 units on it. I think he finishes Alex Perez by sub. Could be early, could be late. I'm not sure, but I think he's going to submit Alex Perez for the sixth time. I took the inside of the distance just in case. You never know, right? Uh, Makai could land a big shot on the feet. Could be TKO, and there's not much of a difference between the inside of the distance and uh, the sub. So, yeah, give me the inside of the distance there, plus 120 for 1.5 units. 
Moving on, we got Vito Petrino going against Tyson Pedro. Uh, passing on this fight, I, I like Petrino. Don't love the price. You know, Pedro's very dangerous early. If anything, I might like look to live bet Petrino after the first round because I think in the first round it is going to be very, very competitive. Might even get like a pick him, to be honest, um, on Petrino after that first round. But, you know, after that first round um, ends, you know, I think the winning probability highly, highly in favors, you know, Vito Petrino. Tyson Pedro 0-3 in his... Um, fights that do reach the second round so yeah it's, it's a pass for me I don't have a ton of faith in Petrino to go out there and lay minus 300 but like I said maybe a live bet spot if anything else uh then we got the main event Shamil Gazeev going against Jarzino Rosenstruck I have two small sprinkles here I have Jarzino Rosenstruck KO2 plus 950 for a quarter unit and then Jarzino Rosenstruck KO3 plus 1900 for a quarter unit I think this fight probably could end in the first round whether that's a Gazeev uh, TKO KO or whether that's a Jarzino Rosenstruck knockout as well I think both guys can knock each other out in the first round I've heard some uh, Gazeev sub take I don't know I don't think he subs Rosenstruck to be honest I think it'd be like a TKO but yeah I think either guy's live definitely to win in the first round but the reason I do like those sprinkles is if this fight does reach the second round I think those uh, you know quarter unit sprinkles will very much be on the table um, and they're big plus money numbers as well uh, plus 950 KO2 plus plus uh, 1,900 KO3. I think if this fight reaches the second round, those will be on the table. But nothing I'm extremely confident in. Like I said, I think this fight probably does end. It probably does end within these for the first round and a half, to be honest. Um, under one and a half could be solid. Uh, fight won't start round three. Could be solid parlay piece as well. But I do not have any parlays, any tracked parlays on this card. Because, I mean... I know it's a big parlay card, but I mean these 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 late. I mean these fighters are they're just way too wide. Like Umar minus a thousand, Urseg minus he's minus what four thirty five. I mean Anders minus five hundred. I mean there's not much you can do here with the parlays. So, but I know everybody's doing it. So best of luck to you on your parlays. I think they do hit. I think they do hit, but. Yeah, and the juice is not worth a squeeze, in my opinion. All right, quick recap. Uh, my only money line bet is on Bernardo Sopai, one unit plus 123. I got Nurmagomedov inside the distance, 1.25 units minus 125. Urseg inside the distance, 1.25 units minus 125. Makayev inside the distance, 1.5 units plus 120. Duncan round two, half a unit plus 470. Duncan round three, half a unit plus 850. Rosenstruck KO2, uh, plus 950 quarter unit. Rosenstruck KO3. Plus 1,900 quarter unit. Ended up with a little bit more action than I expected. I, I didn't expect to have much action on this card, but I don't mind the plays that I do have. Keeping it lightish this week, and next week we do have UFC 299 as well. So there you guys have it. Best of luck on this card. Be careful. I mean, an eight-fight parlay that comes out the mind, uh, that comes out the plus 250, I mean, it, it doesn't do much, but like I said, I think the favorites probably do roll. Best of luck, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Look out for the content for UFC 299 next week. See you guys later.